Hello, I'm Sula, and this is Day 6 of 8-Day Astronomer, a course in which I teach you how to become a backyard astronomer in just 8 days. And this is Day 6, Getting to Know the Sky Better. When you go outside and you look at the stars, you'll notice that some are bright and some are dim. And some stars on your star chart you can't see at all. Why is that? Well, it's mostly due to the distance of the star from Earth. Stars that are closer will appear brighter, but also is based on the star's intrinsic brightness or luminosity and how big the star is. But what we see of a star here on Earth is what we call its apparent brightness. The apparent brightness of the stars is called their magnitude. And what we see from Earth is the star's apparent magnitude. It's based on an ancient system invented by Hipparchus, one of the greatest astronomers of ancient astronomy, in 150 BC, where the brightness of the stars are ranked by their magnitudes, with magnitude 1 being a bright star and magnitude 6 being a dim star. The brightest star a human can see without a telescope or binoculars is about magnitude 6 or 6.5. A star of first magnitude is 2.5 times brighter than a second magnitude star, which is 2.5 times brighter than a third magnitude star, and so on. The very brightest stars can be negative magnitudes. The star Vega is magnitude 0, and the brightest star in the night sky is Sirius, and it's magnitude minus 1.4. There are only about 20 stars that are first magnitude or brighter. And these are the stars that you'll want to learn first because they will be your guide to finding other stars and objects in the night sky. Now, how to find the brightest stars. Let me tell you a little bit more about star charts. I mentioned in an earlier episode that you would need to turn your star chart to match how the star patterns appear in the sky because the stars will be moving across the sky from east to west and their orientation in the sky won't always look how it looks on your star chart. So you have to turn your star chart to match how the sky looks at the time that you're viewing. Also, north is up on a star chart but to the right on a star chart is west, and to the left is east. Now, how do you find them? Well, not very every bright star will be visible in every season, except for Polaris, which is visible year-round, and it's only magnitude 2. Of the bright stars you'll want to learn, seeing them depends on what season you're viewing. Here's a list of 10 or so of the brightest stars in the northern hemisphere, and the season in which you can see these stars, Sirius in winter, minus 1.4, Arcturus, 0.05, Vega, 0.03, in summer, autumn, and early winter, Capella, 0.08, autumn, winter, and spring, Rigel, 0.13, in winter, Procyon, 0.3, winter, Betelgeuse, 0.5, winter, Altair, 0.7, in summer, Antares, 0.91, summer, Spica, 0.91 in Virgo in spring and summer, Pollux, 1.1 in Gemini in winter, Fomalot, 1.1 in Deneb in Cygnus the Swan, 1.25. After a while, you'll become a great judge of a star's apparent brightness, and this, along with knowing its apparent distance in the sky, will help you a lot when trying to locate other objects like star clusters and galaxies. Sometimes when you look at stars, they seem to make a pattern, but the pattern is not necessarily an official constellation, and those are called asterisms. The most famous asterism in the sky is the Big Dipper, which is just a part of the constellation Ursa Major, or the Big Bear. But there are many others as well, and many of them don't even have names. But recognizing these patterns is very helpful to locating other stars and, more importantly, to locating objects in the night sky. Once you can recognize the brightest stars and the major constellations, 
then you can start using a simple pair of binoculars to look for some other things. So let's go over that. Some deep sky objects are visible to the naked eye, such as the most famous star cluster, the Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters, and that's found in Taurus the Bull. And this is a good object to start with. If it's visible in the sky at the time you're watching this, the Pleiades are visible in late autumn and winter. Though they're visible to the naked eye, in a pair of binoculars, they're very pretty. And you just need a simple pair like this, nothing fancy. Let me tell you what a star cluster is though, and then I'll tell you some other objects that you can see in the night sky with your naked eye and with a pair of binoculars. Star clusters are just groups of stars held together by gravity. There are two types of star clusters. There are open star clusters like the Pleiades, and there are groups of fewer than a hundred stars usually, and they're loose and usually they're not very old, relatively speaking. The other kind of star clusters are called globular clusters. And these are very old, some almost as old as the universe itself. And globular clusters contain 10,000 to millions of stars. Probably the most famous globular cluster in the Northern Hemisphere is the Hercules Cluster, or the Keystone Cluster, also known as M13, and is found in the constellation Hercules. It can be seen with the naked eye if you have keen eyesight and you're viewing from an extremely dark place. But normally you would need binoculars to see this spectacular globular cluster because it's right at the limit of naked eye visibility at magnitude 5.8. The Hercules cluster contains several hundred thousand stars and it's a great binocular object. Galaxies are massive collections of stars, gas, dust, and dark matter, and they're held together by gravity also. Probably the most famous galaxy in the Northern Hemisphere is the Great Andromeda Galaxy, also known as M31, and it's found in the constellation Andromeda, and it can be seen with your naked eye in autumn from a dark sky site and easily seen in binoculars, and it's spectacular in a telescope. Nebulae are giant clouds of gas and dust, and they are where stars are born and die. Nebulae are very beautiful, but they can be hard to see. However, there are some that are visible to the naked eye. The most famous nebula is the Great Orion Nebula, M42, found in the constellation Orion, and it can be seen in winter, and it can be seen with the naked eye from a dark sky site. And it's beautiful in binoculars and stunning in a telescope. Then there are planetary nebulae, another type of deep sky object, and they have nothing to do with the planets. <laughs> They're just called that because when they were first discovered, they were thought to resemble planets. They are the remains of a dying star that has cast off its outer layers and left a white dwarf at their core. I don't think there are any planetary nebulae that are visible to the naked eye, but there are some that you can see with binoculars, and they're quite beautiful and are one of the few objects in the night sky that will show you some color the other being some double stars of contrasting colors. Double stars, also known as binary stars, are bound to each other gravitationally, and they also orbit each other. A famous double star with contrasting colors is Cor Caroli, a beautiful double star in Canis Venatici. Now what about the planets? Which ones are those, and how do you find them? The planets can always be found on the ecliptic, the apparent path of the sun, the moon, and the planets across the sky. It makes an arc from east to west in the southern sky. You can distinguish planets from stars generally because the planets don't twinkle. 
unless the seeing or atmospheric turbulence is very bad. And also, the planets don't belong to any constellation. They can appear in different constellations. And the brightest ones are much brighter than any star in the heavens. Venus is magnitude minus 4.6 at its brightest. Jupiter is minus 2.7 at its brightest. And when Mars and Saturn are close to Earth, they can be quite bright as well. But the best way to find the planets is to look up their location each night on Stellarium or Sky Safari or timeanddate.com on the internet or in Sky and Telescope, which gives their locations in each month's issue. All of the planets can be seen either naked eye or in a pair of binoculars. But Uranus and Neptune are a little harder to find because they're not nearly as bright as Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, or Mars. Mercury can be seen naked eye, but it's always close to the horizon, and you need an unblocked view to the west to see Mercury. And you'll never be able to make out any or much feature on Venus. However, Venus goes through phases, just like our moon. And it's quite pretty in a telescope or binoculars when it's at its crescent phase. Mercury will always just appear as a ball, even in a telescope. And Mars can show some surface feature and the polar caps in a telescope, but only when it's close to Earth or at opposition. Opposition means when a planet is opposite the sun in the sky. Jupiter can be easily seen naked eye and in binoculars, and you can see the three or maybe all four of the Galilean moons. And Saturn can be seen naked eye and with binoculars, but to see its rings requires a telescope. And every 14 years, the rings are not visible or barely visible because they're edge on, such as right now as I film this in 2025. Uranus and Neptune will always just appear as blue dots, even in a telescope. You can see Uranus with your naked eye, but it's very difficult, and you would need a star chart and dark skies. So finding the planets is pretty easy, as they'll always be on the ecliptic, and they're pretty bright. But to find the other objects that I mentioned, star clusters, galaxies, nebulae, and planetary nebulae take some skill and it takes practice and it requires using a star chart and learning how to identify patterns in the sky. That's why it's helpful to learn the constellations first because they'll give you a place to start if you know what constellation to look in. And then you know what area of the sky to look in, but also you'll know what time of year an object will be visible because it will depend on whether that constellation is visible at that time of year that you want to view. But the next step after you learn the brightest stars and you learn the brightest constellations is starting to use your star chart to find these other objects that I've mentioned in this episode and the planets, and that will require you to learn how to star hop. Star hopping just means you start with a bright star and then you go from that to something else bright and then to another object and so on until you get to the object that you want to view. Star hopping is a skill that requires practice and patience. But with practice and patience, you'll become a pro, I promise. Also, the reason that I recommended that you start with binoculars before considering a telescope is that it's much easier to find objects in the night sky with a pair of binoculars when you're starting out, since binoculars will show you the sky just how it looks to your naked eye, while a telescope will generally not. Telescopes might show you an inverted view uh, or a mirror image. In addition, binoculars will show you a much larger field of view than a telescope will, 
usually binoculars will show about five degrees of the sky, while a telescope would generally show you one degree or maybe even less. Remember, your pinky finger on your outstretched arm is one degree, so not very much of the sky. So your homework before the next episode is to locate some planets, if any are currently visible, because they aren't always visible, and locate a star cluster and a galaxy if one is visible at the time you watch this. And for bonus, locate a double star, especially one with contrasting colors. I'll see you in the next one, Dark Skies Forever, Sula, signing off.